Welcome back to another episode of Arnold's Thoughts Podcast. It's your boy Arnold. And today we're going to be talking about the most asked about questions about overseas basketball. What are you thinking? Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah. If you want to know my thoughts, open your ears when I talk. Yeah. What are you thinking? Hey. What are you thinking? Hey. If you want to know my thoughts, open your ears when I talk. Yeah. Hey. So let's jump right into it. What is the first question I would be asked is what is the best basketball overseas basketball league? Um, I think that varies. What varies about that, the best basketball league overseas, it depends because you have Europe, ACB, where they have a lot of good leagues, like they're very high caliber. You got Euro League, and then you got teams like in Japan, not Japan, but in China. China has very good, the CBL, I believe it is. It's a very good league, and they have, um, they're pretty high caliber. Uh, next question is overseas basketball worth it also that depends on you you define whether or not that is good, worth it for you because it's a long road it's a tough journey it's a lot of ups and downs it's a lot of craziness going on with the life but for me I've been playing for nine years and through all the ups and downs it's worth it um, I have a book coming out that explains exactly what you need to get your journey started and the traits that you must have in order to play basketball overseas. So check that out. Um, next question. What does overseas basketball players make salary wise? <clears throat> so I believe the, the salary it also depend, depends on the region that you're in. Each region, like in South America, um, you got lower South America, which is like Ecuador, um, Bolivia, countries like that in that region, they're very low paying countries. And then when you get into like Asian countries or Middle Eastern, they're a lot higher paying countries. You can have salaries from, and I know in Japan, they range from like three grand in the third league all the way up to, you know, millions, 1.2 to the average top league player making about 15 to 20 a month. I know in China, in the second division, they have average players. The average salary is like $30,000 a month, you know, and then it ranges for some guys making 100000 a month. And then when you get into the top league, the CBL, they're making like 800000 a month. So Asia is definitely one of those big markets that has a lot of currency and they have they pay very very well but it's also very very difficult to get in those leagues it's in asia but asia is definitely high paying south america is low paying europe like kind of in the middle you got a lot of low low paying like in france um france lower league is kind of ranges between like 1200 to 2000 then the b league is like 4500 to like six or seven then top league be like 10 to 20. you know russia is another big market. They pay really high. They pay a lot. You can range from like seven to thirty thousand a month. So those are a couple of the different ranges of salary wise. Next question. Um, and and are European basketball players better? That is subjective. I feel like basketball in a sense altogether is depends on the player. You can't just say like, well, he's better in this player. because basketball nowadays, everybody has their, everybody has their like, they have a way of getting better and learning and there's like no, no drop off. Other than the NBA, wherever you go, it just depends on how hard you work and who you, who you train under. Because you look at Luka and look how great Luka is. You can't tell me he's not one of the top players in the league period in the world period you know and then you got people in you go of course you love your lebron's john morantz and jason tatum they're from america i would say a lot more players from america are better because their level is higher but now i feel like there's a lot of players whose levels are just as easy even par because they 
I have more exposure. It's more exposure now. It's not so much. It's not so much a drop off, and they're not playing against high caliber players anymore. Everybody's playing on the same level, and it just depends on the the person and their work ethic. Um, next question: How to play overseas basketball? Basically, I would say you would need to find an agent. You can go about finding an agent. Literally, go through on Facebook. Go to Facebook groups. Go on there and type overseas basketball, FIBA basketball, and there's like groups that'll pop up, and you just go on those groups or look, go through there, see what players are posting, see what agents are in there. Overseas basketball agents. Just type that in on Facebook. I say Facebook is the best place to go find an agent. And then they'll tell you what they're offering. They'll tell you the deal. They'll tell you what their requirements are, what you need, film, where was your last plan, um, or workouts you can go to, certain things like that. So you can, they can link up with you. They might be able to help you to go overseas to put, to put you in a camp somewhere to get looked at, put you on a travel team somewhere so you can get a chance to go play. So I would say that's the best way if you want to go play basketball overseas to get in the niche and get your foot in the door uh next question how old does overseas basketball players normally be i feel like there's some it just depends on the country and how good how, how good the player is and longevity because nowadays a lot more players are lasting a lot longer i played against guys that are 42 years old 43 i had a teammate he was 44 and still playing still playing to this day so it just depends on who you are. It just depends on how good you take care of your body and you decide how long. There's kids who are six, like, like I said, I'm bringing back Luca. Luca was 16 years old when he first started playing. And that's professionally. Giannis, he was playing professionally, I think, very early, around like 16 or something like that. Uh, there's, if you're good enough, you're gonna be, you could be able to play overseas. That's a good one of the good things about overseas. LaMelo, I think they were playing before it was 18 overseas, you it just ranges on how good you is, your connections, and how well you take care of your body because I didn't play against 41, 42, 44 year olds, and I didn't play against 16, 17 year olds. So that's one of the perks of being able to play overseas that you're able to play very early and for a very long time. Uh, next question. Uh, Overseas basketball versus NBA. There is a lot of difference when it comes to this. Because in overseas, the court is a lot smaller. You need to understand the spacing of the court and how much of a big difference that is. That's probably one of the biggest things that I realized. Is the time. First, we're going to start with the spacing. Spacing. The spacing of the court on the, in the NBA is just wider. The three-point line is wider. you got so much more room. There's so much more ground to cover. Overseas, the court is it's shrunken down. Why? Because the three-point line is closer. And there's also the three in the key. That doesn't exist. So in the, in the NBA, defensively, you can't be in the, in the key underneath the basket for three seconds. You have to either be out or you got to be one foot or hands reach. I think it's like one foot or hand reach next to your defender. Like you can't just be sitting in the defense. But overseas, you can sit in the paint on defense all day. It goes on, you sit in the paint all day. That's one of the biggest, biggest difference. So that defensive three changes the game. The spacing of a three-point line changes. That's the difference, changes the game. Um, and the time, normally overseas is 40 minutes per, um, for the entire game, 10 minute quarters. And the NBA is 12 minutes, so that's 48 minutes, which is eight more minutes, which is almost a whole extra quarter. Longer games, longer seasons, majority of the time. I know in Japan, they play like 65 games or something like that. And I know some leagues in Mexico, they play like 50 games. But on average, most leagues, they're playing like 30, 35 games, 40 games. That's for a whole season. That's about six, seven months. That's about six, seven months, which is about your average, which is like the next question. Uh, how long does a typically uh, overseas basketball season last? And it's, it's about, they normally start in like September. Some leagues start in September on average and go till about May. 
maybe going to July, I mean, June, July-ish, because they go, that's if you go all the way. That's like if you go, like, if you like me, you go into the finals almost every single time. So you're going to be there six, seven, eight months at a time, a whole stretch of like seven, eight months. That's about a, that's a good season. If you get you like seven, eight months, that's a good season. Some are longer to Europe, a lot of Europe, they go 10 months. Japan, nine months. China, then you got like, so you got shorter seasons. You got the summer leagues, which is like three month seasons, which are always in the summer. Those normally last between three, two and a half to three months, three, three and a half months, if they make it to the finals. The longer, if you make it to the finals, a lot of times that's always going to extend your season in about a month extra. So that's going to, that's the depending on the factor of your team and who you are and who you are. Uh, next question. What does overseas basketball mean? Overseas basketball means is just you're not playing in your country. So I'm from America. I'm from um, Florida. Anytime you leave the country and they have to put the stamp on your passport, you're playing overseas. That's what it means. Once you cross over it into another country, any outside of that, you go into that FIBA federation. That's overseas. That's considered overseas basketball. It's not just the one in your country. And I, I primarily think it, believe it it's more catered to like the Americans because I never hear, like recently I was in Chile, I never hear someone from Chile say they go into Venezuela and say, oh, well, I'm playing overseas. They just say, well, I'm playing in this league. So I think that mainly pertains to people here in America is that when you leave the country, you're considered playing overseas. Because you literally have to go to a different country to play in their league. And every country has a different league. And some countries from some teams play other teams in different countries. And they be in their own um, league. Like the Euro League. There'd be teams from like Germany and then Spain. Like they'd be in different countries and come together and play in the league. Like the Olympics. Where you got America, you got... Um, Russia and you got China. Everybody has their own country plan and they come together and they play against each other. Same thing happens all the time. Like South America, I was recently playing in the BCL Americas. It was teams from Brazil, Chile, Argentina, Uruguay. And they had their own league that we played in and they played the best of that. Also, each one of those teams play in their own separate league that's inside of the country. So those are the differences in the play of overseas. That's all I got for you guys today for questions, frequently asked questions on this segment. Till next time.